Hello, welcome to this week's Create Your Light Challenge. This week, we're going to be looking at gear hacking. Gear hacking is taking everyday objects that we've got lying around, some dust sheets, perhaps some cardboard boxes, and looking at ways in which we can diffuse the light, say, coming out this speed light. Following on from our window light challenge, perhaps the window light we had, it, we wanted overcast and we got sunny or vice versa. With gear hacking, what we can do is build reflectors and we can build soft boxes out of these sort of things to really create the light we want whenever we want it. First thing we're going to do today is we're going to build a couple of soft boxes we can use to diffuse um, everyday light coming off of either continuous light sources or coming off of speed lights. For this, we're going to need some dust sheets that I found in my garage, uh, some pl uh, plastic dust sheets. I've got a cardboard box here, a couple of different sizes. We're gonna have a strip soft box and I think we'll have a square soft box. I've got some tin foil here. If I line one of these soft boxes with tin foil, what will happen there is that will actually bounce the light around a lot better, so we'll get a lot softer light. So I've got my cardboard box here. Uh, this is going to be a great cardboard box for a strip soft box. Strip soft boxes you'd use for three quarter length shots or half length shots maybe. You can even use them for really great head shots. Benefit of using a cardboard box like this is we'll get some barn doors on the front of it here. So these will help us to shape the light and control the light even more. First thing we want to do is to measure it out like this. Now all I need to do is cut that to length. We have our diffusion material, fold it back on itself. There. And I just need to go and get some tape to tape this down. So we finished our soft box now. We have our SB5000 taped into the back of it. It's secure. I've set this to remote mode here. We're gonna use the creative lighting system. Um, so we've got our receiver here, which is this circle. Uh, group A, channel one. I've got with me another flash here. I could use an SU800 as well, or for some of the cameras that have pop-up flashes, I could use that as well. Um, but I've got my flash gun here. This is set to master mode. Uh, dash dash here, which means the light coming off of this speed light won't be taken into account on the exposure. So if I fire my flash now from here, if I trigger the remote speed light that's currently sitting in my softbox here, we'll get some beautiful soft light coming off of the softbox, um, just like so. And there we go. This is good for three quarter length and sort of half length shots. You can do a headshot with it, but let's actually make a smaller one. And what we're gonna do now is put some silver inside it. So that's gonna sharpen up the quality of light we actually get. So we've got our smaller softbox here. This is going to be very good for headshots, very directional light. And I've got my barn doors on here as well. We can make some really interesting uh, shaped light with this. So. I'm uh, just going to mark out my speed light with my pencil here. Let's mark around this. There we go, like so. The main difference between this one and this soft box and the one we've just made is I've got some tin foil. And what I'm going to do is line the inside of this with some tin foil, just like so. Some tin foil that way, and some tin foil this way. And what that does is gives me a sharper light inside the softbox. It's gonna bounce around a lot, lot more. So let's move that around here like so. That's gonna give me a lot sharper light when I actually come to fire the flash through the back of this. Okay, so just gonna make the final cut down here so we can pull this out. Okay, there we go. So we're good there. Just check our, if our speed light's gonna fit in here. Yeah, we're good with that. Look at that, it's a really, really good fit there. Uh, I will take that in later for um, extra stability. I'm just gonna make a final cut in the tin foil that we've and we'll just push the tin foil around it on the inside there. That makes a great fit on the inside there. Just gonna take the diffusion panel over the front of it and then we've got another great smaller softbox with a lot sharper light in it because we filled this one with tin foil. And there we go, diffusion material, barn doors, and we've got our speed light. So we have our uh, improvised light stand here. It's a broom pole. Uh, I've got my clamp here just to stop it falling down. We've got the flash gun, just taped it on for uh, further stability there. Um, we've got the diffusion panel here, the tin foil in here, 
kicks the light. So you see on those shots that actually the, the, the catch lights really do come alive. So there we have it. We have our own home studio built. I've got two soft boxes covering all types of different portraiture I'd want to do. Uh, I've got my small soft box here filled with tin foil there. It gives me a much sharper, crisper light coming off of this. Uh, great for headshots and things like that. This soft box, much better. This is a great strip soft box here. We can use this for half length, three quarter length. You could use it for headshots as well. We could tilt it this way, feather the light into our subject as well. So we can do lots of fantastic different types of uh, photography with our um, sort of home studio setup we've got here. So we've made our first part of our professional home studio. Um, what about if we just want to use bare speed lights? If I want to stop light spill, I've got two options. I can zoom the flash gun in. This is currently on 24 mil. Uh, I can zoom it into 200 mil. That will give me a focus beam of light uh, going down a wall. Uh, the other way of doing that, and the easier way of doing that, is actually to use something called a flag. Now, flag stops light spill. I'm going to build my flag out of a bin liner. And all we're going to do is just tape it around there so what that will actually do now is any light spill that was likely to go to the left of the frame here is not going to happen. So if we just tape that around there, we don't need to do anything sophisticated with it. It's just taped on around there like so, and then we just pull that out to make sure wherever we're pointing it, we don't get any light spill. So I'm just adding the last bit of tape here. I tape it from the inside uh, because what that allows you to do is keep the maximum level of uh, spill light flagged off. If you tape it around the middle, what could happen is you could end up curling this round here, which will give you a very projected beam of light. You're almost creating a snoot. So this, this bin bag approach here can create both a snoot and a flag. So different types of effects, single piece of uh, black plastic, bin bag, use card, all sorts of things. And what this will do, as you'll see in the images, this controls any light spill, so I don't get any light anywhere where I don't want it. So as you can see there, with the different shots, you can see what it looks like with the flag and without the flag. Having a flag on a light source, be it a speed light, be it a continuous light source, really does stop light spill. It gives you massive amounts of control. So where a flag there will stop light spill, what happens if I want to spread it around? What I can do, plain piece of A4 paper, card, printer paper, gloss printer paper works really well for this. If I was to use a reflective surface, especially a gloss reflective surface, again, tape that on there, that works as a great bounce card, okay? You've got a sort of a small portable ceiling with you, which enables you to take your light wherever you want. This works on camera and off camera. It's a really, really good trick. Um, so we can do some really nice portraits with this, or we can light any subject actually, be it macro or anything like that as well. So it's a great little technique here. Uh, plain piece of card, paper, just take that round there, and then we've got our bounce card, which gives us, again, the bigger the light source, the softer the light gets the less shadows you'll have. So there we go, I've taped my paper onto the top of my speed light here. This now gives me a really versatile bounce card that I can use on camera like this. So say I didn't have a ceiling, I was outside, I can actually force the light forward, it's gonna spread, soften, get much larger. It's gonna work really, really well as a bounce card. If I actually wanted to get my tin foil out of my soft box, I could coat this in silver, that would actually then give me uh, an option of picking up those highlights and really, really bring the uh, light to life. Uh, catch lights and really light up a face if we were shooting uh, portraiture with that. Um, so, card, paper, uh, tin foil, uh, whatever you want to use, use it as a reflector. One of the other things we can do to shape light is use uh, crisp uh, packets as uh, snoots. Um, what this enables us to do is really give ourselves directional light. Um, it doesn't actually matter which flavour you use, it doesn't affect the quality of light from my experiments. Um, but what I've done here is I've cut the tube in half. And if you're very careful as well, what you can do is you can get two out of this. If you cut this just below the weight sign there, and I just finished cutting this one, we can actually get two snoots. Now this is going to give me some very, very interesting light. Perfect thing with our speed lights is these fit with no modification. Just go straight in like so, 
and then we can adjust accordingly. So let me switch this back onto remote mode. There we go. Uh, group one, channel A, and I get, let me get my master mode and we'll show you the patterns of light this will create on the wall. So as you can see from those images, our crisp packet snoot gives me some amazing light. Uh, you could use it on a hot light as well, continuous light. Just make sure you don't use cardboard around hot lights because it will catch fire. I have done that previously, learnt the lesson. Please don't do that. With a speed light, it works really, really well. So an amazing way of creating some very, very interesting portrait light. Okay, so continuing with our gear hacking themes, what we're gonna build now is a light tent, a macro photography light tent. Really easy, small cardboard box, could be a big cardboard box, depends how big your subject is. We need some plain paper. I'm using A4 paper, this is fairly see-through. Uh, tissue paper would work just as well. So, we need to mark out the space we're gonna cut on each side. We use the hole in the middle uh, as our area to shoot through and we shine our lights from the side. Really simple, uh, let's get cracking on that. Okay, so I've cut the front flaps off. We could perhaps use these later and use them as barn doors or um, we can put them around a light source to actually um, use them creatively to stop light spill. Um, so they're worth keeping those. Uh, just when you're cutting this out, just remember to maintain the structural um, integrity of the box. If you cut too close to the edges, what you'll find is your box will actually fall apart. Um, so just be careful as you're cutting out these edges here. Um, so we're going to do that now. So I've now got all my holes cut out here. We can see this is still fairly stable. What we'll do is we'll now just tape the paper across the sides here and we'll just put our light source coming through the sides. And there we go, we've got our paper taped on the sides, taped it around there. I've actually lined it with the inside here to give me a bit of an infinity cove uh, type effect. I might need to do a minimal bit of Photoshop work on the final images just to lose the edge there, but that's gonna come down to how I actually choose to light it. So uh, let's do some product photography with our light tank. So what I've got here, I've got a FTZ. Uh, I'm gonna use that as my product. We'll do, I've got a macro lens here on my D780. Uh, I'm gonna do a shot of the connector pins there. Uh, remote flash here, this isn't affecting the light at all and that's triggering this because the light's coming into here. I'll do a shot in a second with a continuous light source. We'll move location and do that. Um, but let's have a look to see how this comes out here. So if I shoot top down from here like this, shooting into the white background there so I don't get any of the edging on that, I should get a really cool shot. And that's looking really, really good for a homemade product shot. So just change the product here. This is a jewelry shot, if you like. It's my wedding ring. So we bring this in, continuous light. This is gonna give me a really warm light on this. Much warmer than you get with the flash gun unless you change the white balance. So I'm just gonna bring this in here. Macro lens, 60 mm macro lens on my D780. Cool, really warm light, really nice shot there. Okay, so next thing is to play with. Uh, using a sieve stroke colander to create a shape on the wall. Looks really, really cool. Um, really interesting patterns. Everyday household object, just push a light through it. Can be a constant light, works better with flashlight, but you could do it with a torch as well. Um, so lots of options with one of those. Uh, I'm gonna put this food dye in this water and we're gonna throw uh, a light through this as well. And we'll uh, change the color of the wall as well. So lots of other things to play with. Okay, let's take a quick look at my set. I've got my camera here with my flash gun on it. Here is my flash gun and tripod. Um, what we're going to do with this is trigger it remotely. Uh, the light is gonna go through the calendar here and it's actually gonna strike the wall up here and give us a really interesting pattern. Have a look, see what this looks like, see what sort of pattern we get on the wall. That is really cool. Uh, I really like that. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna do a self portrait in that light because that looks really, really interesting. So I've now got my blue food dye in my bottle of water. Here's my flash gun. Uh, here's the camera I'm gonna trigger it with. And what we're gonna look at doing now is changing this wall to blue. That's just amazing for a bottle of colored water. It looks really, really cool. Just wanted to share with you some of the behind the scenes secrets I've been using while I've been producing this video. You may wonder how I've been able to compose and shoot all of the self-portraits and some of the images when I'm also operating a video camera, a behind-the-scenes B-roll camera, plus a stills camera. 
The big trick is for me to be able to use SnapBridge from my phone and link via Bluetooth or via Wi-Fi to my camera. So the best way to use SnapBridge is to use the auto link feature. That will automatically download your images from your camera to your smart device. I'm using my phone here. You could be using your tablet. So set up auto link. It will send the JPEG straight away to your smart device. I've actually been using it for composition so I can see my composition and then remotely trigger the image as well so I can trigger the camera and the speed lights at the same time. So it's a host of features which makes it really, really useful. You should try it out. I hope you enjoy using it. So there's some gear hacks for you. I've got my light tent here. I've got my softbox. We've got the smaller softbox back over here. We've got our snoot to create all sorts of different shapes of light across the wall here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching those. I hope you have fun putting them together. Um, it's really an inspirational way of creating and shaping and modify the light you have around you. It gives you the opportunity to create your own light. We'd love to see your images. We'd love to see your gear hacks. So please share them on hashtag createyourlight. Look forward to seeing them. Thanks for watching.